On behalf of the National Historic Cheesemaking Center located here in Monroe, I want to welcome you to the interviews we've been doing in the various cheese factories here in the Green County area and the Lafayette County. Uh, today is Wednesday, October 16th, 2013. You can see we're standing in front of the Roth Case Alpendel store here in Monroe. I'm Virgil Leopold, along with Don Sorn on video. So we're going to go inside and visit the Roth Case Cheese Factory and also the cheese store here. All right, we're inside the uh, Roth Case uh, Cheese Factory right now. And tell us exactly where we're at right now. This is Rob Fry. Yeah, what we're standing in right now is our Culinary Education Center. We okay. call it the CEC. Um, it's, a, it's a room that we utilize to uh, create new recipes with our customers. Um, the customers actually can come in here and take a tour of the viewing hall, and then they get to actually come in and uh, we present some applications, whether it's in a fondue or in a raclette style um, application, whether it's on a grill or melted for sandwiches. So these stuff. people contact you, and so we want to try this out, or you contact them? Yeah, How our, does that work? Our, our salespeople actually okay. uh, have um, customers that we do routine tours with throughout the year. Um, they'll bring a customer in, whether it's a new customer or an existing customer. And uh, they may have executive chefs, depending on what the customer okay. is, whether it's a restaurant or a retail store. Okay. Um, and what we do is we set up the, uh, the appointments here. Uh, they go and they do a tour. They get some kind of an education um, on applications of cheese and, and different things that they can actually do with the products that we actually sell to okay. them. So. Tell me about the Roth case. Is it Emmy Roth case or it's? it's, it's uh, it was Roth case USA. Okay. Um, and that started back in 1991. Um, we had uh, two uh, cousins or two brothers and one cousin. Um, the two brothers were from Switzerland. Okay. They had a business uh, through three or four generations there. Uh, and they were importing cheese to each other. Uh, the cousin was actually on the East Coast. Uh, and they thought it would be best if it actually if they imported the technology and the recipes and was able to produce a domestic uh, cheese with the European recipes. Um, okay. And that started back in 1991. Uh, it so was, this factory began here in 91 or was it yep, something? Yep, this factory this here factory began in, in 1991. 1991. Okay. Um, it was an existing factory already uh, owned by Mid-America Dairymen at the time and they were making okay. uh, Munster cheese and brick and, and, and basically I, I believe it was for uh, pizza cheese is what they were okay. making here. Uh, but one of the things that attracted the owners to this facility was that it had a basement and what they saw was curing cellars which okay. is actually a little bit more of what you see here on a larger scale than back in 1991 with what we all had. All right, so we've got all the, the cheese right, right in there yep. that you can actually come in and see. Yep, the aging cellars are, uh, uh, the climate is controlled, uh, okay. relative humidity and temperature, um, and that's, uh, we, we do a wash drying cheese in these cellars. Okay. Um, and it's something that uh, through technology we've been able to get a very consistent product um, and the process, even with the seasonality changes in the milk here in Wisconsin, uh, we've been able to actually produce a very consistent product. What kind of cheese do you make here? Uh, we make about 15 to 18 different types of cheeses. Really? Okay. But our, but our flagship cheese is the one that you see behind us. Um, it's, it's actually the Ground Crew, uh, original and Ground Crew Reserve. Um, we used to be known as, as Greer. It's a Greer style Correct. cheese. Correct, okay. Um, an Alpine and style And that's a cheese. name that a lot of people would recognize. Yep, that's a name that everybody would recognize. You Traditionally it's in fondues, um, but with this facility right here, the CEC, we've actually been able to expand the applications um, to like French onion soup and salads and, and just macaroni and cheese and, and just different uh, Different, um, different applications as far as uh, getting a little more creative with, with the applications that it actually go with. What is your personal role with this? Are you a cheesemaker yourself? I'm or? actually the plant manager. Okay. Um, I've been here for about 11 years. And okay. uh, this edition wasn't even on, that we're standing in right now, wasn't even here when I was okay. working here. Um, this edition was put on in 2006, and then we had another edition in 2009 because of capacity issues. We needed more cellar space. Okay, so who's the cheesemaker? Who would be like the head cheesemaker? Cheesemaker, here? Uh, head cheesemaker is uh, Bob Boback. Okay. Um, he's been with the company for about 19 and a half years, almost going on 20 years now. Is that now. right? Yeah. Don and I were just talking that it seems like when you go into the factories, and Don, you're, I think, the 10th factory of the 12 in Greene County. Mm -hmm. This longevity is, is great. People come into this business and stay in this business. And Why is it? They do. Um, 
primarily one of the reasons that Greene County in the state of Wisconsin has the highest concentration of dairy facilities in the county. I think there's about 13 dairy facilities total. Okay. Um, and then if you start to look at the industry as a whole, um, it's, it's just a major, I mean, everybody grew up around it who, who lived in Wisconsin. My and dad was a milk enjoys caller. it, correct. Yep. Somewhere they were, from yep. very little on, were very involved somewhere, either dairy Absolutely. farm or a cheese factory or whatever. You're right. Absolutely. Um, there is longevity. Uh -huh. um, from the standpoint that, uh, specifically with this company here, uh, we're kind of diversified in the market. So if, if the market takes a downturn like in 2009, okay. um, the other two segments of the market that we had covered actually okay. kind of rose and, and we had you know some uh, increase in business. Okay. Um, people tend to go out or not go out and eat out as much at, at, at restaurants. Okay. Um, but they will go and buy a nice bottle of wine and a nice piece of cheese and go home and treat themselves for a third right. of the cost, right. which is really nice. Right. Um, so I think that also has some of um, you know the stability with this as far as um, making sure that people, as long as we continue to be um, creative uh, with new things coming to the market okay. and staying ahead of market trends, um, I, think that, I think you can have longevity in this business. Tell me about how many pounds of cheese do you make here a day? Um, daily, uh, we will make somewhere, um, boy, daily, that's uh, probably about forty to 50,000 pounds. Okay. Annually, um, we're just under or just over about nine and a half million pounds right now. So where do you get your milk? Uh, the milk is actually comes from about a 50 to 60 mile radius of the plant. Um, it's all within uh, Wisconsin milk. Um, okay. Uh, and, and that's something that we take pride in, the fact that we can say that we make the product in Wisconsin with Wisconsin milk, um, and it's all RBST-free milk. Um, so, What does that mean, Rob? I'm gonna go, um, people watching this might say, what is that? Yeah, well, the, the bovine growth hormone, Okay. Um, and there was a lot of uh, interest in actually um, in, in giving the cows a supplement as far as making them produce more milk Correct. with, a, with a, a genetically engineered uh, growth hormone. So um, one of the things that we've done with our suppliers, uh, with our milk suppliers, is we've asked them, because our customers are demanding it, that we make sure that they actually have uh, RBGH free, okay. that they're not treating their cows, um, okay. that they're actually doing you know humane practices. And not that it's not humane, there's an argument on both sides <laughs> of the fence for that. Yeah. <laughs> But we could good spend a whole hour on that, couldn't that we? That could to? be. <laughs> that could be. But you have, you know, good farm practices, um, right? And that the herds are being treated, you know, well. Um, you get high quality milk if you do that. Um, right. And in the state of Wisconsin, I can't imagine uh, anybody having a better milk supply than what okay. we have around this area. You talk about that, and the dairy industry is so important because if you're making forty to fifty thousand pounds of cheese a day, you're bringing in four hundred to five hundred thousand pounds of milk a day. Correct. So I mean, I, you've got to go out a long way to be able to do that. And we're, we've got factories here in Green County that are producing that on a regular basis, and that's, oh, yeah. that's a lot of milk coming in here to be able to do that. Yeah. How many people do you have working here? We have about seventy-five people at this plant. Okay. Um, total between the three locations here in Monroe, we've got a distribution center, another curing warehouse, and this okay. facility. There's about 125 people. Okay. Now, I was here once and was looking through the windows to watch down, and I think I actually took a tour. Mm -hmm. And so you have some robots that actually do some of this lifting and switching of cheese here? Or? We do. Um, with, these, with the sellers back here, uh, that was part of the technology I was uh, talking about earlier, was the fact that it's nice, but if with this kind of capacity or with this kind of volume, uh, to get the cheese washed uh, and, and cared for properly, we needed to tap in some to some of that technology. Okay. And in Europe, they've been doing this a long time. And now our parent company, who is Emmy, uh, which is the largest dairy co-op in, in Switzerland, um, found that it was a great marriage between us and them um, because we had a distribution uh, system. We had a sales force already here. Um, so what we did was we actually tapped into some of that technology there okay. that allows us to smear the same the, the cheese same way every time regardless if it's winter summer fall Super Bowl Sunday Christmas Day um, and we just have people that monitor that uh, we still uh, that technology is what actually allows us to make okay. a very consistent cheese for the customers customers don't like to see big swings and shifts and variances within their product 
Um, so we've actually been really pleased with what it is, and we have uh, four of those machines that help us take okay. care of the product here. This is interesting because when you talked about that and you said it came from Switzerland, Don and I happened to be traveling with our wives in Switzerland and got to Guerriere. Mm -hmm. and got to actually see that factory and actually yeah. see the robots that yeah. were there. So when you talk about that, yeah. that's that they, they've used that technology for a while. Yeah. Before we came into this area, we were into another area where you were doing some trial cheese. Can we go back to that area and talk about sure. that kind of thing and the kinds of things that you're trying to do and, and experiment with uh, to make, again, to keep... To keep diversified, I guess, is what Absolutely. we want to talk about it, so that's very important. So if we can stop here and go into there, Rob, sure. that would be great. Good. Let's do that. Well, we're in the viewing hall area now, right? So people who come into the store can actually come back in here and watch what's going on. Correct, Rob? Yep, that's correct. And what's going on in there right now with those guys, just out of curiosity? Um, what they're doing is they're actually uh, what's called hooping the cheese. They've okay. pumped the curd and the whey over into the forms. Uh, and they actually are going to make a square format. Uh, okay. This is probably a Fontina. Uh, the hood on this is going to come down, uh, and then for about the next 25 to 30 minutes, they're going to be pressing the cheese. Okay. So they want to compact the curd okay. even further, expe expel as much of the whey as possible, okay. um, and make sure that the curd knits together, and okay. then they're going to take it out of there about a half hour later, and they'll put it on acidification racks. What happens with your whey here? The way that we have here, uh, what we do is we actually take all the butter fat that's out of it that's left from the production process, okay. and then we chill it down and we sell it to a, a, whey, pr a whey protein uh, converter that actually takes the whey okay. and they'll dry it down into a whey protein powder. Right. Now these two little you know, copper vats. kettle and a little yep. vat there, yep. you want to explain what happens with these? This is kind yep. of interesting, I thought. Well, one of the things that we have or that we like to do um, is... In the, early, in the early years, one of the things that we did was there was only so much money and so much capacity that we had for a startup right. company, but we wanted to expand and keep expanding our, our production line. So one of the things that we did was we started to make trials, and then we would farm that recipe out to a partnership plant. Okay. And they would make the product for us because they had the capacity. All right. Um, and then they would ship it back to us, and we would label it okay. and, and sell it to our customers. Um, it was a win-win situation. Our product line continued to grow. And we kept uh, partner plants in business, and their co-op and their patrons would would continue to milk and have you know a good life. So, um, the other thing that we do with this is we do run trials in our own plant. If a customer comes in and tells our salesperson, "I have a great idea," or we see a market trend, we can manufacture the product on a small scale, send those samples to the customer or to the salesperson, and they can analyze it, say yes, that's spot on, or they can say no, we need to change the format. We come back, do another trial, send out the samples until everybody's on the same page that that's an acceptable product, and then we can move that to the big vats. Where does most of your cheese get sold? Um, a lot of the, the area, or yeah, a lot of the cheeses get sold to uh, like Whole Foods, uh, Wegmans, okay. Trader Joe's, um, in the in the store chains. But we also have uh, large restaurant companies like Melting Pot, um, with a sole uh, okay. supplier to Melting Pot. Uh, but we also have like Panera, um, Panera Bread, uh, which is another customer of ours. Um, is it so always it, under your label, or could your no, cheese not, be not, found not, under other labels? Yep, then the too, cheese just can like, be found okay. on private labels. Some of it's private label, some of it's our they, label. They buy it from you as a yeah. block or whatever, and, they, and then they, they convert they do whatever it, and they, they want to be able to do with it. They can do what they want with it. Okay. Absolutely. What's the future of this particular? Plant here in Monroe, and am I understanding that you're also expanding to another area? Yeah, we uh, we're actually opening up a new facility in Platteville. Okay. Um, that's actually going to be uh, just square production. Okay. So the square production that you see underneath the hood there is actually going to be moved to Platteville, um, okay. just for the capacity reasons that uh, we're kind of constrained here with how much we can actually do. Uh, the plant was designed for about seven and a half million. And we're doing just over nine million, so <laughs> we need to expand a little bit. So, so you've all grown what you thought you yeah. were going to start out with. Okay. Yeah. For future, uh, but the future of this plant is we want to remain uh, the specialty artisanal cheese plant that we do. We're very flexible. Um, there is a lot of hands-on at this facility. Uh, just because of the nature of the cheeses that we do. Well, when do you here. talk about the fact that you've got 75 people working here, mm -hmm. plus all the the uh, technology that you you use besides sure. that, that's still a lot of that's still a lot of hand labor. Yeah, the, I mean the technology is primarily just to make a very consistent right. piece of cheese, right. um, and, and sometimes that's a challenge, especially with right. the seasonality changes in the milk. But 
Um, th this plan will be here for a long time. Um, we've got a great core group of uh, customers. We've got a great core group of employees. Um, and the R&D department that we've established over the last couple of years is really making strides with different products and, and being uh, really uh, creative um, in the market as far as bringing new things and new ideas. Before we started filming, I mentioned that that was a copper kettle, and you said you use the copper kettle for the Guerriere mm -hmm. cheese. Okay. Yep. And why is that? Um, specifically, back in 1991, the product that uh, the state inspector came in and said, uh, well, what do you plan on doing? And we said, well, we want to have copper vats and wooden boards. And he said, no, you can't do that. Not in the state of Wisconsin. So the one thing we did was we shipped him to Switzerland to show him how Gruyere is actually traditionally made. Okay. Um, and now for, for labeling reasons, uh, it, we call the product Ground Crew. Um, so the, the milk actually reacts with the copper lining in the vat, right. and with the curing process downstairs and the smear cultures that we put on is what gives Greer the Grand Cru its unique flavor. Okay. Um, you could make a vat in stainless and a vat in copper, and in about eight, nine weeks down the road, you'd have totally two different flavor profiles. Really, makes yeah. a, I know you've been talking difference. about the Swiss cheese. Most of the Swiss cheese now is made with the stainless steel. But you got to, uh, but Edelweiss, they do use the copper kettle, and sure. it does have a different taste. So yep. there, yep. there really Definitely. is a difference when you make them that way. Absolutely. Rob, this is a great plan. Thank you so much for your time. Now, what we want to do is go in and talk to Tony a little bit, if we can, at the store, because you got a very, very beautiful store here yep. that a lot of people stop through. And so I know you sell a lot of your products there, but you sell other products, too. So if it's all sure. right, we can go talk to Tony. Yeah, Tony's got that. over 100 cheeses in the store. Is he's, that right? He's more than happy to okay. talk to you. One of the things to keep in mind, too, uh, Rob, is Cheese Days is coming up next year. Okay. Oh, I know. And we want to really involve cheesemakers more, so we're working, uh, trying to set up a, a time during our opening ceremony where we have all of our cheese factories from Greene County be represented at that opening ceremony, along with three of them from Lafayette County, and Gary Gross, and from sure. the uh, Babcock, Babcock Hall. Hall. So we're, we're really looking forward to that. As a, we think a real addition to our opening sure. ceremony. So somewhere along the line, we'll contact you to be involved in that. But in Absolutely. the meantime, thank you so much for your You're time welcome. here. And we'll stop, and then we'll go get Tony and okay. interview him out there. Great. You're Thanks, welcome. Rob. Thanks. And well, we're inside right now with Tony Scroggin, who is the, are you the, like the head guy of the uh, cheese store here, right? Yeah, I actually own the cheese store, okay. but I lease rent from Emiros, you know, the facility oh, that's how it belongs works. to them. Okay. But the store name and uh, also the inventory, the coolers, uh, all that is mine. I do business on my own. Okay, now. so Don's going to take a, a quick look around the whole thing. What he's looking at right now was the first part of the store, correct? That is correct, yeah. Uh, a year and a half ago, we expanded the store. Uh, they asked me, you know, if I uh, need more space, and okay. I actually uh, did that at that time. So where we are standing right now uh, used to be the main office. So uh, I expanded the store, put uh, okay. larger coolers in there, okay. and uh, put uh, new furnishings in there. They updated, they put me a new floor, a new ceiling in, the walls, all that belongs to them, and uh, I have the interior. Okay. And, uh, actually, I represent them with the cheeses, you know, so right. I uh, buy, buy I uh, contract, you know, at least 51% of the cheese from Emmy Ross, you know, okay. which, which is a very easy thing to do for right. me. I go there every week <laughs> to their right. warehouse. Okay. But they give me the freedom to represent everybody in Green County. So I go to different uh, companies. I have uh, cheese, you know, from Silver Lewis, from the Sholley up there, from uh, Broncos. I have cheese from Maple Leaf, you know, okay. uh, over in Schalzburg from Raleigh, you know, okay. and, and all that. So I, I think I have a pretty good okay. mix in here. Okay. Well, you also have some from other countries, correct? Oh, of course, yeah, because that comes in from uh, Emmy, yes. Uh, well, that comes uh, from Emmy. Yeah. Okay, I uh, gotcha. do not import myself. I just go to their uh, warehouse down here across from Swiss Colony, and that's where I uh, buy, you know, I have probably 20, 25 uh, different cheeses, mostly from Switzerland, some from Spain, a couple, uh, I think one from France. France so and, uh, totally like how many different kinds of cheese do you probably have in here? Probably around, right around 150. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever you want, you can come. You can get from baby yep. Swiss to as aged as you would yep. want your cheese uh, to be. Basically, yes. I have uh, the most aged, I think, right now is a 12-year cheddar, you know, okay. uh, that comes from Broncos. And the baby Swiss, the young cheese, you know, the curds, of course, 
three times a week, fresh from Silver Lewis, okay. you know. Uh, so these are the extremes that I have. Somebody watching this and says, well, why would I want to have an aged cheddar or an aged uh -huh. Swiss? What, what's unique about that? Does it take on a different flavor as it gets older? or What, what is the deal Actually, there? Actually, there are flavors developing that you will never even guess in a okay. young, mild cheddar, you know. Okay. Uh, not every cheddar can, uh, not every piece of cheddar can just age, you know, uh, as long as they want. You know, sometimes the cheese comes to the point, yes, this is it, you know, the, the affineurs, they kind of taste that, you know. Okay. If there is a flavor developing off flavor or something, you know, then okay. yes, it, it's best okay. to be sold at that age. Okay. But in a 12-year-old cheddar, for example, they, they call that uh, umami. It's like a tsunami, okay. uh, you know, an umami of flavors. They actually okay. activate all the taste buds, okay. you know, from sour, okay. sweet to uh, mild, okay. strong, all at the, basically okay. the same time. Okay. And some people just love that. Okay. All right. And your hours here? My hours are Monday through Friday, uh, 9 o'clock till uh, 6, and on Saturday, 9 to 5, Sunday, 10 to 5. So We're open all year everybody. around except... Uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year, and Easter Sunday. Okay, great. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. <laughs>